everybody, I've got a great one for you today. Um, we're going to be talking about the new version of Enterprise DNA Power Tools. And this is a suite of external tools for Power BI developed by Microsoft MVP Greg Deckler, who's been working with Enterprise DNA for the last few months in developing this tool set. We released the original version of it um, about a month and a half ago, which included three tools, um, Quick Measures Pro, Metadata Mechanic Pro, and Power Sword Pro. Um, Greg and I did a, a video back then um, on introducing the Enterprise DNA Power Tools. It's a fun video, really good interview, um, where he walks through kind of the genesis of this project, um, how it all started, um, and then the three tools that were kind of the core of the, the set originally and how to use those. Um, what I'm going to be doing over the next five weeks or so is kind of going back through this whole tool set and taking one tool a week and really going in depth at how to use the tool and how we use it in, re in real world situations. So either in our own reports or in developing challenge entries and the ways in which it, it really fills in gaps in Power BI and really saves you time in taking certain things that were time consuming or difficult and making them really simple. And so the one I'm gonna focus on today is DAX Editor Pro. Before we dig into DAX Editor Pro details, let me show you how to get the external tool set. Um, so what you do is you go to um, enterprisedna.co to the main site and you'll go here tech and then power tools and it'll say download the enterprise dna power tools now and this is you have to be a member for this but if you're a member these tools are are all free um, but only for members and then it just says sign in to download power tools and i've already got my login credentials in and so if you scroll down a bit, what you'll find is um, external power tools. And you just click on that and then say download file. And that'll give you an MSI file. And you just double click on that and it'll run you through the installation routine. And when you, when you run through that routine, what you'll get is if you go to your external toolbar, you'll get this set of tools on your toolbar. So all five, all five tools. And we're going to jump into DAX Editor Pro. And you get this cool splash screen. And here's the, the main screen for DAX Editor Pro. And um, the first thing I do is I, I like to pick a theme that Greg's got a lot of um, cool themes built in here. Um, let's just throw a measure up there so we can, we can actually see the, the theme. And if you just drop down here, um, he's got a whole whole range of them. I really like the implementation of dark mode in this. So that's that's what we're going to use for today. Um, so the first thing is this is the main menu up here. And we're probably going to be changing this soon in terms of making this in, in the icons with tooltips. But um, for now, this is this is where you, you kind of control the uh, of the functionality and so let's let's start a new measure and this is this is based on challenge 19 uh, that we just finished up um, on the call centers so we've got a measure let's create a new measure just to show you how that works called um, percent SLA compliance And I'll just I'll just start here. I won't finish the whole measure, but I just want to show you. So so basically, um, there. Let's do total rows. And what you'll see here is it's got full, um, full you know auto auto complete or IntelliSense. And rather than me just now, you know, kind of typing typing everything in, let me just copy over the. The rest of this measure because I want to I want to show you some some other stuff in here and what we can do here one of the nice things it's got DAX formatter built right in so it'll 
It'll take and format your measures. And you, you know if it formats the measure that there's no there's no syntax error that it finds, which is a nice a nice little checker. And there's some other really good debugging features that uh, that I'll show you. And what one of the things that's that's really great about this is you can do measures, you can also do calculated columns. And so it'll it'll put the measures into whatever table you want. Um, in this case, um, I just have it set to go right into my key measures table. Um, and so the other one of the other great things about this is what you can do is you can enter metadata here. So this is, um, you know, we can just say this is service level agreement. Measure for uh, data challenge 19. Um, we can put a format string on this. I mean, in this case, this is just going to be a, a whole number. But if it were percent, we could put the percent string in here. What we can also do is we can also go folders. So if we look at the at the structure here of key measures, right now I have no folders in this. But let's let's go into um, DAX Editor Pro and let's let's create a a demo folder folder. Put that in demo. And then if this were a special kind of of field, so like if we were returning a country returning a web um, image we could set the the data category right here in right in the editor as well as make it make it hidden or make it shown and then all we have to do here is hit save and it saves the measure back and if we go into power bi and close minimize this you can see now this demo folder includes our percent SLA measure and it has a description here which is the metadata that we put in. So really nice way to document your report to um, divide things up into folders kind of make your table a lot more manageable. Um, so the next thing I want to show you is a really simple way to create measures and it's something that I've always wanted the main editor to do. So um, let's say we've got this median cost year over year measure. And this is, you know, this is a moderately complex measure. And so let's say we want to create instead of median cost, we want to create average cost. Well, typically what we'd have to do is we'd have to select all, copy, create new measure, paste, um, and then go through line by line and change median to, um, to average, unless we knew the the keyboard shortcuts, which I think is Control D. Um, but watch how easy this is here. So all we have to do is we just hit copy and it creates, you can see this meeting cost year over year and a, a number one here. And then what we can do is let's take the one out. And then what we've also got here is full, um, full search and replace. So if we hit find, Let's take median and replace it with average. And we'll just do a replace all. And now this is now a year over year average measure rather than a year over year median. And so you can see how easy this is in terms of creating new, new measures. And one of the other nice things here is that we, Greg's implemented this kind of outline close so you can if you've got a, a long measure with a lot of complexity you can you can open or close that to um, to make it easier to see the whole the whole measure in total and then kind of dive in as you need to into the different sections you can also go into focus mode so kind of a full screen full screen mode without the list of, of measures um, you can comment out um, lines quite easily. And we're going to do that. I want to show you the debug features. And so let's say, um, for example, that this, this measure, you put it in, your, um, in your, your table in Power BI, and it wasn't showing 
what you'd expect it. So you, there's something wrong here and you want to debug it. And so what you can do here is hit debug and it says debug tooltips ready. And in debugging, one thing you have to do is this debugging is going to happen kind of outside the context of the of the report page. So if you've got something like selected value of dates year, either in a slicer or in the context of a table, you're going to have to set that that variable equal to something. So what we can do is we can we can temporarily take and comment that out. And you can see it's just got a nice way to just point and click with comments. And then let's say um, we're going to set current year to 2020. And so let's just rerun those debug tooltips just to make sure. And now watch what happens. And normally the way we'd have to debug this is by going variable by variable and substituting the variables into the return statement to see where the problem is. But watch the way this, this works. If we mouse over the variable, what it shows you is, is the, the type of variable that it is. So in this case, it's an integer and the value is 2020. If we now go to the second one, previous value, the value is 2019. If we go here, value 86.5 and then 73.8. And then if we go here to the result, we'll see 17.1. So instead of now having to go through and substitute five different vars into the result statement, you can just debug this by just mousing right over the tooltips, which I think is pretty awesome. Um, so we can, once we figured that out, we can take this comment out. And what we can do is reformat that measure, make it look better. And so if we go back in again, and let's save this. So there's just one other feature I want to show you. I think we've covered everything, but there's one little nicety that I want to show you in here. And let's, I think it's in this median duration year over year. Yeah, so we've got this got this measure, and we've got two two conditions for the calculate statement. And let's say that we we've been working on debugging this, and this we think this statement, this fiscal year statement, is problematic. And so we want to try to comment that out and see if the measure works and delivers the the expected results without that in there. So the thing is, if we comment this out. What we've also got to do then is delete that comma on the previous line. And it's not a big deal, but it just becomes a headache when you're commenting and, and uncommenting, testing things out to remember to put that comma back. So one of the things we can do is Greg's implemented this nice commas first debug commas mode. So what you can do is just you click on that and it just moves the commas down to the, the beginning of the next line. And the reason that's important is then what you can do is you can comment out this whole line without having to without having to then go back and and delete that comma since the comma is now sitting at the front of the line and you can test this and if it if it still doesn't give you what you what you wanted you can then take that that comment out and return the the commas to their original position so just a nice, a nice small feature, but great for debugging. Um, so that I think is is all the features that I wanted to show you in DAX Editor Pro. As I say, it's just a nice editing environment. Um, is lightweight. It 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 doesn't require a long uh, learning curve to figure out how to use it. You can just kind of dive right in and start working it the way you normally would within DAX, but now you've got all this this new functionality and features and so really want to thank greg for his hard work on this it's just made working in power bi for me a lot more pleasurable um so uh, eager to hear what you think um i'm going to be back next week with one on um, conductor pro which is a really incredible tool for managing your external tools so if you're if you're like me and you've got 
a huge toolbar, you know, full of stuff, or even if you don't, um, but you you want to put some some things in, some tools that you've heard about um, as being useful. It's a really good way to do that and manage your your toolbar in an easy easy way. So I'll come back next week, show you that one, and um, really hope you're enjoying trying this tool set out. Eager to hear what you think about it. And um, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best, take care.